everyone. In this video, I'd like to dem demonstrate the basic functions of the Tranquility 2 monitor. Let's go ahead and begin by pressing the power button. Please hold down for at least two to three seconds so that the unit can go ahead and power up. And one thing I wanted to point out to you are the parameters that this unit comes with. So if you notice here, you'll find your different parameters. You have your entitled CO2, NIBP, SPO2, two temperature parameters, two IBPs, and an ECG port. Now, this unit uh, by default comes with your NIBP, one temperature parameter, SPO2, and an ECG parameter. Entitled CO2, the second temperature parameter, and IBP are upgrade options that you can choose to upgrade your unit to sometime in the future. Now for your ECG port, please know that you do have the ability to select a three lead or a five lead patient cable. And underneath the parameters, you'll actually find what's your battery door. So if you ever need to replace the battery, this is where you'll be able to find it. Now, if we flip or turn the unit to the back, you'll notice a few additional ports. Now you have your grounding port here, your power cord port, as you can see, and then over here in this section, you have an ethernet cable port and two RS-232 ports. Now one RS-232 port is to connect a Wi-Fi transmitter so that you can go ahead and send wirelessly the data over to a central station, or you have the other RS-232 port, which is to uh, the ability to uh, connect a, an external monitor. So, flipping the unit back, and on the right side, I just want to point out real quick, you have a section here that has a blank cover, but this is where you would have your thermal printer if, in fact, you purchased your Tranquility 2 with the printer. Now, <clears throat> if you notice, you have quite a few options here at the very bottom. This unit is touch screen, so you can select or navigate through by touching or by using this knob, you can also navigate through the different tabs. All right. So the first tab that you have is your NIBP list, which if selected, you will be able to see here the measurements that were taken. Now with the alarm setup tab, here you have the option to set up your alarm limits for the different options here. Okay, let's go back. You have the mark event tab here, which you will press at any moment that you feel that you want to record that event or that that was seen. You'll go ahead and press mark event and select which other, whichever you choose to associate with that particular event. So once selected, you can press yes, and if not, we'll go ahead and press no. You also have the start stop button. Now this is particularly for NIBP, and that is to start an NIBP measurement or stop it manually. Now then you have the silencing or mute button, as I would like to call it, which is uh, the button you press to mute all of your alarms. If you no longer want to hear it for whatever reason, you can just easily press on silence. It'll mute it, as you can see here is red, and then to unmute, just press one more time. Now in setup, here you have all the, uh, you have the options to set your unit to whatever settings you choose to. Um, there are quite a amount of options here. Um, and let me just continue going on with the rest of the tabs and then I'll come back to here. Now you also have your freeze button. Now this will freeze the screen. If the doctor or the nurse wants to freeze the screen, then they can do so by pressing freeze. And as you can see, you tap it once more to unfreeze and go back as usual. You also have here the trend button which you will be able to configure the different uh, settings for um, the trend as you would like to see it, whether it's the graphical trend, the tabular trend, an alarm event, so on and so forth, and for how long. All right, let's go back. 
And then, as I mentioned earlier, this unit does have the uh, the ability to have an internal printer, a thermal printer. And if you did have that option, you can easily press print once you want to uh, print your report. You'll press print, and eventually your report will print out. Now, this unit doesn't have it, so we won't see anything. Um, your next option is actually your, a recall option. Now, this option allows you to recall patient measurements or patient um, data from prior moments or prior times. You just select. It will be displayed here. You can select, but we have nothing right now, so let's go ahead and hit cancel. And then pause will just pause everything. And then once the doctor or the nurse is ready to resume again, let's go ahead. They'll press resume case and back and back to the main screen we go. Now, we did have the setup section here. As you can see, there's quite a different amount of settings. Now, your factory setup, this is where you will go more so to kind of change things um, regarding the general settings, like in this case, the language, for example. So if I wanted to change the language, if you notice right now, it's grayed out. I can't change it. So what I'll do is I'll actually have to go to factory setup. Now, in order to change these settings, you do need a password. So be sure to be entering the correct password so that you'll be able to change it. Now, um, um, for language, the password is language. Okay, and once I've entered it correctly, I'll go ahead and press OK. Now I have the option here to change the language of the unit. So I want to leave it at English, so we're just going to go ahead and press cancel. <clears throat> uh, you also have here the options to change or uh, well actually to change the uh, amount of waveforms that you see on the screen by default once powering up the unit uh, you will the unit will show six waveforms you can uh, change that to a three waveforms or eight waveforms depending on what the nurse or the doctor would like to see that's totally up to them you have your sweep direction and which way you want it to, uh, the waveforms to go, left or right. Your sound level. Right now I have it off for the purpose of the video, um, but normally, normally this will be on. And you can select the levels of the sound. Now be mindful, if you do have this off, you will not hear any alarms that go off. So please be mindful of that so that, you know, we can enable any alarms that we need to have enabled. And then um, you have your brightness level that you can, you know, select from the least brightest to the most brightest and so on and so forth. All right, guys. Now I want to do uh, continue on with the optional module here. Now this this area here is more so for the upgrading of the options that your unit has. So and if you notice uh, for IBP and tidal CO2, gas, so on and so forth. This actually indicates as off, and that's because this unit is not activated with these parameters. So if ever in the future you choose to upgrade your device with these parameters, uh, it will be here that the code will be entered, the activation code, so that these parameters can be enabled. And one thing that I wanted to point out that is kind of important, um, if this unit is actually capable of doing up to a 12 lead patient cable, um, but in order to have this available, this needs to be um, ordered with this option. If you try to change it after you have received the unit, that's not going to be available. That's not going to be an option. You only have the ability to select the three or the five lead. So if you do want a 12 lead ECG uh, abilities, just be sure to let that be known prior to ordering the unit. Now, um, you also have, you know, the HL7 capability. You'll be able to enter a password here and enable it if if that's what uh, you want. Now, let's go back. Let's press cancel because we made no changes. Um, you then have your waveform selection. Now, this is pretty much on your main screen, the different waveforms that are being showed. Um, you have your channel one through channel six, and in each channel, you can select what you want to see. So uh, if I wanted to change my ECG lead one to, let's say, ECG lead five, I can go ahead and do so. And now my channel one will show that particular 
um, that particular waveform. Uh, same thing goes with the rest. Let's go back and place this back. Okay, same thing goes with the rest, channel six. Let's, uh, if I wanna change it from plath, I could do so. Let's go ahead and leave it alone. And then once you've made all of your changes, just go ahead and press okay. And um, now it has been saved. So again, this unit does not have a printer, but if it did have one, you have your option here to select printer settings. And um, since it doesn't have one, it will show us disconnected. But if it was to have had one, you, all of these settings will have been available for you to adjust, um, including the hospital name or the clinic name um, to be shown on the report. Let's go ahead and press back. You have the configuration manager, and what this does is uh, give you the option to configure any users that will be using this monitor. So if we press back, you have uh, the drug calculation, which this is used for the, the uh, nurse or the doctor for them to enter the information of the medicine or the medication that is being used and how much of it, so on and so forth. You have a few other uh, options here um, that you can navigate through as well. But let's go ahead and press back. And now we're back to our main screen here. And so since you do, as I mentioned, you do have all these tabs here. Now you also have these buttons toward the bottom of the monitor that is quite similar to the uh, commands here. So you have your start and stop the NWP measurement button. You have the silencing or muting button, your setup button, uh, you're able to freeze, you have the trend and the record button, and that is actually for your printer to go ahead and print out the report. All right, so once in your, your waveform screen, your main screen, um, here you're able to click on each waveform section and actually change the setting of that particular uh, waveform being displayed. So if I was to just press on the top uh, waveform, I will then have all of the different settings or options that I can set that particular waveform to, such as my alarms, such as the filters, uh, the sweep speed, how fast I want the waveforms to go. Um, here is where I would actually select the three lead or five lead patient cable, uh, whether or not I want the unit to detect the pacemaker. Um, and then you also have the ability to change the color of the, um, of the waveform. So like, uh, for example, that was in green. If I want to change it, let's say to blue, if I go ahead and press back, you will notice that all of my ECG, well, all of them <laughs> were related to the ECG parameters, which is why they have changed. All right, but let's just go back for the sake of the video. Let's go ahead and change it back to what it was. Leave it at green, press back, and back to green they are. All right, so... Uh, because the, these following waveforms are, are uh, linked to the ECG, I'm just gonna go ahead to the fourth one, which is uh, <clears throat> respiration. Same thing, I'm able to select the high and low alarms, um, the speed, the color of, the, of this particular waveform. And you can do the very same with any other waveforms that you have here on the screen. So in here, same situation. Let's go, let's do NIBP. Um, you can select the units that is used to be uh, to measure the type of patient, whether it's a adult, a child, a, a neonate, um, and whether or not you want the inflation to be manual or automatic. Uh, you are able here to select uh, or set the um, the alarm limits. If we go back, you if if you tap on your temperature. Uh, area, you're able to select again the high and the low alarms. Um, and then select whether or not you want to use Fahrenheit or Celsius. In this case, let's choose Fahrenheit. Um, and uh, you are able to see your NIBPs that were taken here um, at the bottom of the screen. And let's see. All right. So the next thing I actually want to show you guys is that if I was to be doing or hooking up a patient uh, to this unit, I will go here to the top left corner of the screen where I have my patient icon. I press on that. And here I am able to enter my patient information. Uh, I can create the patient ID, enter their patient name, select what type of patient, um, the gender, 
the age, and even blood type. So once you enter all of the information there, you'll go ahead and you'll press save. All right, I have, let's, let's, let's just do one, all right. And let's leave it at that. Let's press save. And now you'll notice the patient information up here. So if I was hooking up a patient, I would have all my accessories ready to go. Now, I just wanted to show you or point out a few things when it comes to the accessories. Like, for example, this SPO2 sensor, it will come in two parts, okay? Your actual finger sensor and the extension cable that actually connects to the monitor. So on one side of the finger sensor, you'll have this connector that actually connects to the uh, trunk cable or the extension cable, all right? And so you'll make sure that they align properly push all the way in. If you notice this latch here, just go ahead and place down to secure the cables together. All right. Now on the other end that attaches to the monitor, I just wanted to point out is the grooves here. Okay. You have to be mindful of the grooves on these connectors because they, if you notice on the side where the parameters are, each connector has a groove as well that must align with the groove of the connector on the actual accessory. So for example, the groove is down here, so is the one on the, on the connector toward the bottom. Just make sure they align, okay, and you're done. If you feel any type of resistance, please stop uh, because you might be inserting it incorrectly and you can definitely damage the pins or damage the sensor or connectors. Okay. So then we have, uh, here, let's go ahead and continue on with our NIBP accessories. So you have your NIBP tubing, sorry, excuse me, your cup, and this is the connector part here. And then you have your actual NIBP tubing. So you have this side that connects to the monitor and this side that will connect to the cuff. Right, now with the cuff, you'll grab the tubing on it, right? This little white connector will gently go into this side you hear a click, and now it will be secured. Same deal with this side that will connect to the monitor. There is a groove on this connector, so be sure and be mindful that you are inserting it correctly, okay? There you go, and it's easy to just pull out. Now with your ECG cable, again, you have the option of selecting a three lead patient cable or a five lead patient cable. In this case, we have a five lead. Uh, that's, it's pretty simple, straightforward, same deal with the groove. Make sure it aligns with the one on the monitor. All right, again, don't force if you feel resistance. All right, and you just pull it out with no issue just to, in order to remove it. And then you have a temperature sensor, okay? This is your temperature sensor here. It is topical, okay? And then the side that connects to the monitor, same situation with the groove. You'll go ahead, align it with the one on the monitor and insert and you're good. All right, guys, I think this concludes our demonstration for the basic functions of the Tranquility 2. Thank you guys for watching.